In today's video lesson, we're going to go through the Loft tool using Onshape. The Loft tool gives us the ability to blend or morph between multiple shapes. So the one that you see right here, I kind of think of this as a vacuum tool attachment or a vacuum hood where it's going to go from a circle to a rectangle. Let's see if we can't give this one a try. So the first thing I want to do is start off with one of my shapes. And I'm going to use one of the planes that's already existing. For right now, I'm going to choose the front plane. On that front plane, I'm either going to put on my rectangle or my circle. Let's start with the circle. I am going to go ahead and lock it onto the origin for this specific example. I'm not going to worry about any sizes or dimensions right now. I just want to kind of figure out how to use this tool. I can always come back in and change these dimensions later. So right now I have a circle and it's laying on the front plane. To be able to make this, I can see that the rectangle and the circle are actually parallel to each other in parallel planes. So my circle was back here and my rectangle's out there. It really doesn't matter as I'm drawing this one right now whether I go backwards to the rectangle or come forward to the rectangle. That's completely up to me on how I design this specific part. So I need to be able to draw back here, more in front here, either way. But there's nothing for me to actually put a new sketch on. I need to create an offset plane. I'm going to come up to the plane tool and I'm going to leave it as an offset. There are a whole bunch of different ones. We might get into them later, but for right now I just want the offset plane. I can then pick the front view, and typically it always brings that new plane out in front of it. So I can either click this black arrow to make it go backwards instead of forwards, or I can just grab this arrow and pull it backwards. You'll notice that the offset distance didn't change from like negative to positive. Um, on shape doesn't need that. It just uses this black arrow to be able to assign whether it's going to go forwards or backwards. So for this example, I'm going to go backwards. But the question is, how much? Well, there actually is a number right here that keeps popping on. But again, I'm just dealing with proportions right now. So ish, somewhere kind of around here is going to work for what I need. Your question may be, can you edit that later? Well, sure. Um, I'm just going to actually highlight the plane. And when I do, it will find it over here in my features bar. If I right click on it, I can edit it. Once I've edited it, I can then go ahead and change its distance, or I can change its direction. I can also just right click on it out in the field, and I can go ahead and edit the plane from there. So either way, you can either come over here to the features bar, or you can edit it out on your screen. All right, so we've got a circle. We have two planes that are parallel to each other, and I'm going to do another new sketch on my new plane. For this example, I'd actually like my two shapes to be directly in line with each other. So my circle is going to be centered on my rectangle. To be able to do that, I'm actually going to borrow that center point or that origin dot that I locked my circle onto. I'm going to do that with a Use or Project tool. And I'm just going to click that. It'll actually send that dot all the way to the back. And I could do that for any shapes. If I wanted to do the circle, I could do that too. Right now, all I wanted was the dot so that I could lock my rectangle onto it. This also gives us the opportunity to use a different kind of rectangle. Instead of the two-point rectangle or the corner rectangle, we're going to use the center point rectangle. With the center point rectangle, I can actually lock its origin or its midpoint on that dot, and as I bring it out, it'll do it symmetrically from there. Now I get to decide exactly how big I want this to be. So it doesn't matter whether your shape is bigger or larger, but there are some shapes it has a harder time trying to loft between. So I'm going to go to something kind of-ish like that. OK, great. So I now have a circle that's on a parallel plane to my new plane, or offset plane. And then I have a rectangle. OK, so just how does the Loft tool work? Once you open up the Loft tool, it wants your profiles. And there can be more than just two. For this example, I'm going to go from the circle to the rectangle. And it'll loft that for me. Right now, it's what we typically consider to be a direct transition. So I kind of have a straight line as it's going from the circle back to this rectangle. There are a lot of other conditions that you can use. It has to do with your start condition and your end condition. I'm going to come down here to this little help icon and see if Onshape can't give me some more insight on that. 
So here is the none or no in conditions. And you can see that that's just a straight transition from one shape to the next. I really do like the normal to profile condition. You can see now I have get kind of a blend in between them. So it gives it more of a sweeping condition rather than just a straight condition. When you use this tool, it'll pop up a magnitude option. With the magnitude option, you can change the magnitude to pull that more one way or the other. So right now, they changed it from a magnitude of 1, that's the default, to 3. And as they did that, that left a much higher magnitude on this end and then left a small amount as it went to the other end. There are a bunch of other conditions that you can try to use to try to make some fancier loss. For this one, I'm going to change my start profile condition to normal and my end to normal. And as I do that, you can see that I now have that kind of blend in between them. Um, be careful, there are some that whatever you've drawn that it might like and it might not like. All right, for this one, I would actually like there to be a greater distance just proportionately between my front plane and the plane that I created. So I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to pull it a little bit further out. And great, I like that a little bit better. Okay, so to finish this one off, it also gives us the opportunity to use Shell again. I'm going to open up Shell, and this time I'm going to actually remove two faces. I'm going to remove the face from the rectangle and the face from the circle. That really is the basics of the loft tool. In this example, we lofted from one shape to another shape in two parallel planes. And you can go ahead and turn off all the planes just to clean it up. OK, so what else can loft do? In this example, we're actually going to loft the exact same shape. We're going to loft from a six-sided polygon to another six-sided polygon. And for this software, we're actually going to be able to loft to a point. Uh, some software doesn't like that. Some software would ask me to go ahead and loft to like a tiny six-sided polygon instead. Sometimes that has a hard time trying to figure out the transition to go from a shape to just a point. Uh, but on shape seems to do pretty well with that. All right, so we know we've got three different shapes, a polygon, a polygon, and a point. They all seem to be directly in line with each other. And they're all parallel planes. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reutilize my front plane as the first one that I need. And I'll put on my first polygon. It doesn't really matter for this example whether I use an inscribed or a circumscribed. So inscribed will work fine. I'm going to go ahead and pick my origins so I can get all of them directly in line with each other. I'll go ahead and place it, and I do want six sides. So the first time you click, it's going to assign where the polygon goes, and then the second time, we'll decide how many sides it's going to have. And for this example, we want six. Now when I look at the diamond, each one of these edges is also parallel to each other. To make that easier for me, I'm going to use the horizontal tool, and I'm going to flatten out my polygon. That way when I create the next one, I can make those two edges parallel. There may be a time where you want them to not be parallel, and Loft can do that too as you try to twist an object. Okay, great, so we're now going to do another offset plane from the front. I'm going to pull it backwards, and about that much. There's not a big drop between the offset between those two planes. And we're going to repeat the process we did for the front plane. I'll also use that Use Project to borrow that center point. And I'll use the horizontal again to straighten that up. So now those two edges are parallel to each other. Great, and then I need one more. And again, for this software, all I really need is the point. Now what we want to do is loft these three together. But be careful. You can't actually loft three things all at one time. That is what I want. But for this example, that's not what I want. Um, I don't want that Taj Mahal type top onion type shape where it's blending all three of those together. I actually want to do this in two completely separate lofts. So 
So that will get us our top. And then you can actually loft from a face as well. So I'm going to loft from this face to the point. And then turn off my work points. Great. And there you go. So we actually just lofted from one size shape to another size shape. So we've already proved that the loft tool can go from two completely different shapes to just two different shapes of different sizes. For my third example, we're going to try to use the knowledge that we've learned from the last two, that being the vacuum attachment and the diamond, to see if we can't try to create this tube of toothpaste. So first thing we're going to do is interpret the part. We're going from a circle to a little bit larger circle on two parallel planes. We're then going to go from a circle to an ellipse, again on parallel planes. All of those things seem to share the same center point, so we have some kind of symmetry between our shapes. Then we're going to go from an ellipse to a rectangle. Well, let's see if we can't do it. If you can, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can't try to do it on your own. Great. How did yours do? For our next example, we're actually going to loft between two different shapes, but along a path. This is not just a straight transition in between them. We're going to give it the opportunity to actually bend and bow and follow some kind of path. So it's not the same as the sweep, which we're going to use later. We can actually go between two different shapes here. It just happens to be for this example, I'm going to use two triangles. But I am going to twist one, and it is going to be a little bit larger. But I could go between two completely different shapes. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start off with one triangle. I'm going to create another offset work plane, and I'm going to start another triangle. For this example, I am going to go ahead and line up their center points, just not directly in line. So my next one is going to be in line with each other, but somewhere over here. So I am lofting from one shape to another shape, but they are different sizes and kind of different orientations. The triangles aren't even laying parallel to each other. So if I just do a normal loft right now, it should still work. But that's not what I want. I don't want a direct transition as it's going there. And I don't want to just change the start and end profiles. I actually want to make my own path. Be able to do that because my first shape was drawn off of the origin and this one is in line with each other, then the top is a plane that lays in between those. I'm going to do a new sketch on that top plane and then I'm going to create some type of path that's going to get me from one shape to the next shape. I'll use the three point arc for this example. And now, instead of just using the end transitions that were there, I can actually make this path follow whatever kind of shape I want. Here I've just simply put two three-point arcs together. Okay, so just how does it work? Well, when we're in the loft tool, you just start it off like we normally would. But here I'm going to choose a path. And once I choose a path, I'm going to pick both of the edges that I created. And it'll actually make it follow that path. You do have the section count. If I change the section count back to 1, it will be kind of a simple transition. So it's just kind of doing a hard transition from one part of my arc to the next part of the arc. And that's not really that smooth. It's decent, but the more section counts I have on there, and then the more similar it's going to be to the path that I created. 
And again, this is not exactly the same as sweep because I could have gone from one shape to a completely different shape. And for our final example, I want to really play with loft, and I'm going to try to have fun with it. I actually have a shape here that's lofting three different shapes, but also three different planes. For the most part, everything we've done so far is in parallel planes. For this activity, I'm going to go from one plane, which I think was my front view, to a completely different plane, to a completely different plane, to see if I can't try to create a shape that actually blends and morphs and really utilizes the loft tool. Now be careful, there are several shapes that it has a hard time trying to do, so you might kind of have to play around with your shape. For this one, I use three different rectangles. So they're not the same sizes and not in the same orientation, but the biggest thing is they live in different planes. Let's see if I can't get one to work. Great, that's pretty cool. So I've gone from one plane being the front. I've offset my top plane to be able to make this one in here, and then offset my right side plane to go out there, and that's pretty cool. Loft really is a pretty powerful tool to try to create some more organic shapes, especially shapes that aren't just really extrudes or revolve. So hopefully you can have fun with Loft and try to create something pretty cool.